Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Elliot Answers Show. Today in my studio again in Walthamstow. This morning I actually I've been we've just finished cleaning it all. I had a real deep clean this morning, so it smells quite strong of bleach at the moment, uh, but feels very clean in here. Just I tell you what, it's, it's amazing the amount of like talcum powder that builds up everywhere when you're. So sort of, I use a lot of talcum powder, powder to brush off all the hairs off everyone, off their neck, off their face and, and everything. It's amazing how much white powder just gets up from everywhere. Like and it just seems to just get on top of everything. And it's amazing the difference it makes when you actually give it a proper clean. I mean, I, I do it like once a week to make sure and stay on top of everything, like a real deep clean. But it's, I just can't get over how much of a difference it really makes in here, like when you actually get all the talcum powder up. It amazes me every time. I've been cleaning this morning because obviously I've been recording a lot more videos and trying to put a lot more content out and recording when I've got when I'm cutting people's hair as well and it's got me thinking of how to redesign the room and how to how to do it because obviously I've been in here now for well we moved in to this flat in or well, end of August last year and we're at the start well the end of July now I've got this sort of up and running from about October it was and then it's been a process from there. And it was always designed as a, a room to be able to like create content, but I wasn't doing an awful lot in here, to be honest. I was cutting hair, but I was, I was trying to, well, I was using it as a room to create content to then be able to take photos of people at the end. So I was doing quite a bit of that, but wasn't really recording an awful lot of so videos or anything like that. So it didn't, it's not like it needed to look great on camera or anything like that. But now that I am recording and main source is, is going to be through video. I think it needs to look a lot better on video because where it all is, it's the camera is then pointed down here and then comes sort of out onto the back where it's got obviously all my cactus and you've got sort of nice area in there but then also I've been putting it all in through this area and then it's pointed onto the light, the, the softbox which I would use obviously for taking photos with. And then but if I put the camera there and it, and it focuses through this way, obviously then you don't get a look of you only get a look at the back of the head and you don't, you don't really get to see what's going on too much as well so it's realistically I need to design this side of the room which I'll show you now when I put it all around I need to redesign that room side of it a little bit better as well so I'm kind of and I tell you what like this blue here what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over that white get rid of that and then probably put like a photo up here and then on the other side of the mirror as well these things so this was like an interview from Creative Head and then this one was like finalist when I was Rising Star last year. Finalist of It Guy, which is up behind there at the moment, which is sort of like, sort of like here in this area. Um, I'm gonna get rid of, well not get rid of them, but I'm gonna change the photos around here. I've got the photos of favorite bands. So there's the Arctic Monkeys, Cortinas and Maccabees. I'm thinking of putting them somewhere else so in this like white area which you uh, which you can see so uh, there we go in that area i think there's something that needs to go on the wall there i'm thinking of maybe then putting some like breeze blocks in here somewhere so like make it a little bit more industrial get like a little bit more of the yeah looking more of an industrial look to it and then where the soft box is maybe putting a little bit more of a um like a rustic light or something in there and then getting the softbox out, soft box out when I need to take a photo of someone and do it that way, as opposed to just having that up all the time. So it doesn't look great. I think it needs to look a lot better on the camera. So that's like my thinking at the moment, and just trying to sort of suss out. My mind's just going off with lots of different ideas at the moment of, of just different things. So it's I think one thing sparks your creativity, and then it just leads off into lots of different ideas, doesn't it? But anyway, the the reason for today's show is to answer some of the questions. So I've been out onto the street, I've been asking guys what sort of the problems with their hair are, what annoys them and what, what some things. So now I'm just going to try and answer them and see how, see if we can sort of add any value that way. So the first question was, well not really a question but it was a statement, was that he's going grey but not yet completely grey. And yeah, that's a that's the sort of thing that a few of the guys that I, I cut hair, that's an annoyance of theirs, it's that they're... They don't mind going full grey, because then it's that's a proper look, and they don't mind being their like natural colour, because that's obviously a look. But then they, a few of the guys tend to feel as though when they get like, the salt and pepper look, it's it's sort of it's, it's not really here or there. I guess a good way of doing that is is 
I know at the, the shop that I work at in Soho, Joe & Co, they do like a, a colour blending. So it, it softens the greys, doesn't really get rid of them, but it softens it down so that it goes almost back to dark. With it, and that then get, eradicates the sort of in-between stage, but not fully, so it still looks natural. And what it does is it takes to the greys, but it doesn't take it all the way back to like a full black or brown, whichever your natural hair colour is. And that's quite a, that's quite a way of, a nice way of eradicating that. For me, I, I actually think greys, when they're dispersed in between the hair, look great as it is anyway. And I think it's more just becoming accepting of what is going on with your hair. It's, it's just a part of the process of, of aging, isn't it? And naturally, gracefully aging, really. I think that's that's part of it, isn't it? I mean, I don't think, unless, well, unless you're like, I don't know, like 19 and you're going less really grey. I personally think that, that keeping the hair natural and, and working with it is, is really quite a nice way of, of going about it. Unless you're sort of, like, I don't know, like, uh, well, whoever, but then like going for a change of look, so going from like a peroxide look, going for like completely blonde and, and doing it that way, I think that's that's obviously a little bit different, and that's that's a proper look. But I think if you're if you're worried about the grey, I think it's it's more about just embracing what you have and it being accepted. And yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's personal preference, but I think it looks great when it's just a bit grey as well. So next one is once the hair gets to a certain length it curls and then it's very hard to manage so I guess then with that that's, that's more about maintenance and if, if you don't enjoy the length of it I guess it, it realistically the problem the answer to that is is more frequent haircuts to make sure that you stay on top of that um, and I guess then if the curl is hard to manage maybe that's probably because you haven't been taught how to how to use it properly and I guess that then goes back to in a previous episode where I was showing how to, to flat wrap the hair with, with the dryer so it's it's going back to that it's working it so that actually you can fuse the hair so you, you blow dry it with a, with a brush the hair goes then to the side to the other side forward back and that's then about that would then stop the curl from coming in too much and would manage it to, to a certain degree and then by using the products then to finish it off um, but then I guess if you if you don't want the curl in there at all then it's and you're happy with where it is before that I guess it's, it's the answer to that it's more frequent haircuts really isn't it next one is products that claim to do something but then they never actually do what they say they do you just pulled in by the marketing and never looks like the ads I guess it's interesting actually, yeah, because I was on a I was on a photo shoot a few months back actually, and we were I was using a, a range of products to promote their new one. Well, I was using a product to promote their new this new product, and what we I used it on the guy wasn't really giving the desired look that they wanted with the product so I actually ended up having to use another product as well to get the look that they wanted but then that product was then or that haircut in the ad was marketed as if you want this look use this product where realistically there was that product but then also something else in there as well so it's I guess that is um that's a, that's a problem with, with the marketing world really isn't it and, and yeah I guess it's more transparency and actually in the industry where you, if you want this look, you're going to have to use this and, and not pandering to the needs of the marketing and to the, to the, to the, the, comp the bigger company, you've got to say actually it's, yeah, the transparency is what's, what's going to go with that. I would say it's quite hard for a product company to sort of say this product will give you this look and it's not something I ever, I ever tend to do too much really because it's, products react completely differently on hair texture or hair to hair like it, the, 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 just the colour of the hair it, the, that product will react and act differently so it's if you change the texture of the hair then obviously it's going to change again so it's I find it quite hard it's, it's, it's hard for a product company then also to market it like that as well because it's, it, it will be differently from person to person so I guess it's, it's you having an idea of what look you want to create with your hair and then going to a professional and then then being able to assess what product would work best for yourself 
to, to get that look and it might not just be one product it might be a couple of products it might be layering it with before the before the blow dry and then adding something on top of that to, to achieve that look as opposed to just putting one product in I think as you're as you're growing up you're sort of fed to believe that it's you you put that one product in and then that's it done and I guess as a youngster you're not necessarily told about blow drying and and how to style it correctly so it's it's down to the professional being able to show you the best way for that I guess then that's going to lead on to me what I'm also doing as well as I'm going to product companies to be able to then work out what their product range should do what what their product range works with so what so say if that sea salt spray that they have works with their paste or maybe that actually oh that or this this grooming cream doesn't go with this clay so don't do that those combinations wouldn't work so I'm trying to find out from companies what goes together well so actually then I can help potentially a little bit in terms of that as well because it's it's something that the guys aren't trained on and it's very hard to, to find out about that me even myself as a professional the product side of things is something that I'm not massively clued upon I feel very confident in cutting hair and shaving and doing beards and and I have a select knowledge of products, but I haven't really ever had any like sort of formal product training and a lot of people go into depth about it. So it also it's, it's a great way of me learning about it as well. So it's, I think that'll be something that will be able to bring a little bit of value to everyone as well, as well as myself. So that'd be cool, coming up. Okay, next one. I have fine hair. I wish it was thicker as it's hard to find the balance between not enough product and too much that then it weighs it down okay so then I guess problem you I tend to find when people say it's when it weighs it down or then you don't have enough in it is that they'll tend to be using one product which is then so you that they mean if he's aware this guy tends by the sounds of it was aware that um, he wishes it was thicker so he's aware that it's fine so he's obviously a bit aware of how his, his hair reacts with things so I would imagine that he's probably blow drying it and then putting a product in at the end where then it's hard to get the balance with that because it's, is it enough? Is it, is it, and then it's, is it going to sit flat? A good way of doing that if you have fine hair, which I've, a product that I've used is a Redken thickening lotion. And what this does, it really coats each individual hair, really does thicken that up pre-blow dry. So you'd put that in actually to really thicken the hair up, gives it a good bit of body, coats it with this protein I think it is. And then that then, and it doesn't really weigh it down as well. It doesn't build up. It gives it quite a nice, just sort of nice thickness to it. So you'd put that in pre-blow dry, really work that in depending on how you want to style it. And then I would load it up, not load it up, but I would then, what I would then do is add actually a finishing product to that to achieve whatever the sort of style or look that you're wanting. If you, yeah, depending on whether you want it to go backward, you want it to go forward, or you're pushing it over, that obviously that product would change. But a thickening lotion and building that up from the start, so that actually then it, you, you sort of the second product then goes on top of it, and then maybe a third product of, if if the second product is is maybe a, a paste, then maybe the third product is then a, a bit of dust as well to give it a nice bit of extra body, as opposed to just putting one product in and then loading that in. That's when you get the way where it weighs down and sits flat and sits heavy and it sits greasy. If you then build the products up, so the thickening lotion, the paste, and then maybe a dust at the end, that then really gives it a nice bit, or even then a little bit of hairspray, something like that at the end. Loading the products up and building it up and creating the foundation for it to then build, 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 that's where you get the most success. The problem is when you use one product and it then just sits flat with it because you put too much in because you need the hold because it's thin. That, so the, build, the building of the products is, is a real good way of doing that there for sure. So, next one. The middle of my hairline at the front goes into a point, should I shave it off? Right, so this, this is, so you can see actually on mine here as well, the little problem where it's, I've got a really strong hairline where it sits, sits flat and doesn't necessarily recede too much, but where it dips down at the front. And it really, I guess it depends on the style of hair that you're going for. So I guess with mine, where mine is, is, quite, is quite cropped, quite short, you could get away with shaving this shaving this off and, and strengthening it down if if it was something that annoyed you because obviously the the difference in length between where you've shaved it and the difference of length where the hairline is is not going to be massively or drastically different so you can get away with that 
and it depends what sort of look you're going for. If you want a really like crisp, like solid hairline, then yeah, that could be an option for it. For me and for the, the type of client base that I would have, that's not really the look I go for. It's not really something that I, I'm not big into sort of having like a real sharp shape up, really crisp outline. It's not really sort of what I, I tend to go and promote. I know for a fact there's been a few of my clients over the years that previous to me cutting them, there's two I know for a fact that actually shaved it off, had it shaved off by whatever barber it was, took that up to in there and they've got like sort of quite big quiffs. So the discrepancy between obviously the quiff and then obviously the razor was massive. So actually the regrowth that you have through there has meant that they've had to keep shaving it and keep shaving it on to keep on top of it because it doesn't, as it grows out, it doesn't blend into the top. You just have this sort of spurting through there. So, and all of the guys that I know that have done that and are, are now living through that really regret it because they've, they've been having to endure this pain the whole time, every couple of days of, of, of shaving that. And, it's, and then it, you have to be very careful the whole time of then, am I not edging then in even further up to it? So for me, I would actually really hesitate against doing that. It's, it's not something I promote, not something I would do. And I would really lean against it because the, the feedback that you have from everyone that's done it, it's, it's, it's not cool. I mean, you, if, if, if this hairs are coming down, they're just a bit weaker, then yeah, you can trim them off, but actually eating into the hairline and taking that off, I would, I would say no, absolutely not. Okay. So this next gentleman actually had really quite long hair, he was sort of down to here, and he was saying, my hair gets knotted and hard to brush out at the ends. And with that, there's, there's a couple of things that you can do to enable, or to make your life a little bit easier with this. So the first one would actually to be to make sure when you're washing it, you're using a brush that actually, you can get these shampoo brushes which sort of rustles around with it and that then really makes sure it, it works it into the scalp. So you actually you're cleansing that, really getting all the all the, the dirt and the grime out of it. So that actually you, you can start on a fresher canvas. Then the second thing with that would then be to make sure you're using conditioner. Obviously you want to use conditioner anyway because that's going to restore the natural pH to the hair. You're not just stripping it of all its oils. You're actually then putting a bit more moisture and a bit more goodness locking that into there so that actually it can sit a little bit healthier as well. Obviously what that's going to do when you're then trying to get it dry, the smoothness of the conditioner means you're obviously going to be able to brush out that a lot easier. If you put a, yeah, if you're just going to use shampoo and then try and dry it then yeah, you're going to be tugging it out because there's no natural oil in there. It's, it's going to be hard then to be able to brush that out. If you're using a conditioner, you're going to be able to then smooth through that a lot easier. The next thing you would do would be use to, to brush it out or to comb it out would be to use a comb. Well, I would, I personally would go to use a comb that had really quite thick teeth in it so you actually can work that through it a lot easier. People either have a thin comb or they have a thin brush or a tight brush and a tight comb to then work it through. And then that's when you, you really you're probably pulling your hair and then you end up pulling all the hair out as well so end up you're losing density as well so really uh, something with quite a wideness in through there and you can work it through and that works a lot better for yourself for sure absolutely and then the final question was i hate the weight the curls and having to style it and this was actually one of my friends so i guess the problem with that is if you don't like to style your hair then hair feeling heavy and with curls is is it going to compound the error for sure? If you if you're expecting to be able to just have it to sit there, wake up, and it sit nicely, then I mean, it's, it, there's very few people that can actually get away with that. So actually, the the weight of it, obviously, you can make sure the haircut is cut properly so that it doesn't sit heavy in any of the areas. But then it's the weight then builds up over time for it to sit heavy. So it's it's more, that's when the curl comes out with Connor. So it's, it's more about maintaining a bit more of a, a haircut that sits, or maintaining the hair cut a bit frequently. That's that's the thing with that. I mean, I don't get to cut Connor's hair very frequently. It's every sort of three, four months or so. So getting the haircut a bit more frequently stops that. It's you, The problem with it is then if you bash it with the thinners and really smash all a load of the weight out, is then it, it doesn't, it's hard because it then sits out in different areas. The curl, if you're smashing thin scissors into curly hair, it then you don't. What you'll find is actually the hair sits really quite frizzy. So it's, I would lean against on really curly hair. 
really thinning the hair out. You want to texturize it, but in different ways than using thinning scissors because it then can sit frizzy. You get hairs that stick out even more so and compounds the error of, of feeling that because then it just feels like it just sort of sits like a ball, sits into a bit of a bush, and then it's quite hard actually to style that. So it's getting that haircut a bit more frequently, but then, then cut correctly means that you can do that, yeah. And obviously, if you're not wanting to style the hair and have it quite maintenance free, then obviously shorter is better because the shorter the hair is, the easier it is to style it as a general rule of thumb. Obviously, some people have hair that sits, sits a lot easier and sits down a better when it's longer. General rule of thumb, if the hair is shorter, it's easy to maintain and easier to manage and style. And there we go, that's the questions for all today. So hopefully then, if there's any more questions that you have or anything that's on your mind, anything you're struggling with, any products that you think, oh actually, well, well what, would that, what would that do with my hair? Send me in a photo, send me in some sort of background knowledge of your hair so I know what you do with it. And I'll be more than happy to help out and try and answer any questions that you have. So feel free to message me. I hope you enjoyed today. So I'll be doing this every sort of week, every two weeks or so, there's nothing too strict with it, just when I find the questions. And yeah, any messages, send them all onto my social media channels, they're all linked below. And have a great day. Thanks a lot. Much love, Elliot.